you're starting your week with us, hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Ijiyun in Seoul. Before we get started, let's first get a quick check of the day's highlights. With the number of foreigners living here in Korea having topped 2 million last year, there are growing calls to change immigration policies to deal with a shrinking working population. We're seeing the rise of self-service systems, ranging from unmanned dry cleaners to digital kiosks that let people do most of their banking tasks on their own. These stories and more coming right up. Producer prices kept their upward trend for the seventh month in a row in February, edging up 0.3% from the month before. Preliminary data released by the Bank of Korea Monday shows its related index topped 102.62 last month, logging its highest point in over two years. The central bank says the rise comes on the back of a hike in agricultural, forestry and marine products, which jumped 2% on month. Coal and petroleum product prices dropped by just under 2% compared to January, but on year they logged a 38% rise. Based on these trends, consumer prices are likely to continue to rise, given that producer prices are a key indicator of future inflation. A growing number of average Koreans are feeling the pinch as their personal debt grows while their income is at a standstill. Statistics Korea says the average nominal monthly income of Korean households last year only edged up 0.6 percent from the previous year to around 3,900 U.S. dollars. Now that's the lowest yearly growth tallied since related data was first compiled in 2003. But the level of household debt has been growing at a fast rate, approaching 1.2 trillion U.S. dollars as of the end of last year. As of the third quarter, the household debt to GDP ratio surpassed 90 percent of 4.6 percentage points in just a year. And adding to worries are the U.S. Federal Reserve's plans to keep on raising rates, which could hike borrowing costs for vulnerable households already struggling to make ends meet. Despite the very public challenges Samsung Group has been dealing with in the past few months, the share value of its companies have only been rising. According to Korea Exchange, the combined market capitalization of Samsung's 23 units came in at nearly $392 billion as of last Tuesday, a rise of 12.1 percent from the end of last year. The value of Samsung Group stocks accounted for 28 percent of the Cosby and Cosdoc combined, up from 26 percent from last year. The gains were driven by Samsung Electronics, and analysts say investors have been optimistic on the stock based on expectations for strong demand for semiconductors, for the new Galaxy S8 smartphone, and for an improved corporate governance structure. The Korean market has had some time to catch its breath after a sharp rally last week. Both the Cosby and the Cosdac opened the week with a slight downtick. And we're now joined by our markets contributor, Choi Jin Suk, to talk about overall stock market performance and upcoming market events. Hello, Jin Suk. Great to be here. All right, so how did the Korean stock market close on the first day of the week? Both the Cosby and the Cosdac fell slightly on the first session of the week. The Cosby fell by 0.35% to close at 21 of 57, while the Cosdac followed with a 0.68% downtick to close at 609.11. The biggest factor on the Cosby was a retreat of foreign investors. Foreigners unloaded shares on the market for the first time in 11 sessions. Although retail investors bought shares, the Cosby lost steam as institutions continued to sell shares as well. Most sectors other than non-cyclical defense stocks were sluggish, while blue chip stocks showed a mixed picture. Samsung Electronics, which has recently been uh, breaking all-time highs, suffered from profit-taking action by investors. The Kostak market opened the session with a slight uptick, but it soon erased early gains as both foreigners and institutional investors unloaded shares during the session. Now, foreign investors have played a significant role in the recent rally on the Cosby market. Mm -hmm. But after today's session, do you think investors might have concerns about them pulling out of the market again? Foreign investors bought 1.5 trillion Korean won worth of stocks last week to lift the Cosby market by as much as 3.2 percent. 
helped by massive stock buying by foreigners, 19 out of 22 sectors enjoyed a weekly rally. Despite today's a drop caused by the sell-off among foreign investors, experts still think the Kospi market can go higher from the current level. But since the Korean equity market had experienced a sharp rally in such a short term, there was always the possibility it would lead to profit-taking action. The key in the near term will be whether the Kospi index surpasses 2180 for the first time in nearly two years because equity markets need to break through resistance levels to end consolidation and go higher. We can't be overly optimistic that the market will go straight up, but that doesn't mean we need to worry about today's drop either. All right then, what are some of the market events lined up for this week? As the March of FOMC meeting is now finished, a number of key Fed officials are going to deliver speeches this week. The list includes Fed Chair Janet Yellen, New York Fed President William Dudley, Chicago Fed President Charles Evans, Kansas City Fed President Esther George, and Minneapolis Fed President Neil Kashikari. Since there are not a lot of global economic indicators reported this week, investors are expected to pay attention to what Fed officials will say about future policy directions. There was no surprise in the result of the March FOMC, and the market reaction was very positive. Chair Janet Yellen was good at communicating with journalists and markets during her press conference too. Therefore, any unexpected comments by Fed officials this week might act as a negative catalyst in global financial markets. Investors are especially interested in what Minneapolis Fed President Kashkari will say because he was the only dissent vote at the latest FOMC. And global investors are also likely to pay attention to U.S. President Donald Trump mm -hmm. and his health care plan, which the administration wants to have replaced uh, Obama's uh, Affordable Care Act. Right. President Trump and the Republican Party are looking to pass the American Health Care Act, also known as Trump Care, on Thursday local time. The president said a Republican bill to replace Obamacare will result in more insurance plans and lower costs. Experts say the passage of the new healthcare system is very important from a market's perspective because this can raise the feasibility of passing other policies, including tax cuts. After Trump was elected president, global equity markets have enjoyed a decent rally due to expectations for tax cuts and more business-friendly policies. Therefore, this Thursday's event is expected to give hints on whether Trump can realize his plans going forward. All right, and coming back to the domestic market, the mm -hmm. Q1 earnings season is likely to be one of the most important factors that will determine future market directions. So what will be the expectations on that? Right, as key market events in March are now over, the focus of the Korean market is quickly moving towards the Q1 earnings season, which will kick off in April. Robust earnings results by companies are essential for the market to go higher as well. Fortunately, expectations are not bad at all. KB Securities says projections on Q1 corporate profits have been raised from 42.7 trillion Korean won in early February to 43.3 trillion Korean won now. Better earnings can be a significant catalyst for foreign investors to stick to the Korean market as well. By sector, cyclicals, including technology, materials, and industrials, are the ones that uh, experts are keeping an eye on. If these sectors can lead the way in a further rally, key market indexes can break through long-term resistance levels. One uncertainty is whether an earnings rebound led by certain sectors and specific companies such as Samsung Electronics will be able to have widespread effects across all sectors. All right, thank you for the outlook and analysis today. My pleasure. The number of foreigners here in Korea for the purpose of work or marriage has surpassed the 2 million mark last year. And in light of the country's aging and declining population problem, some are calling for a more bold immigration policy. Our Eunice Kim has this report. 
The number of foreigners who have resided in Korea for more than a year eclipsed 2 million as of November of last year. According to data from Korea Immigration Service, 962,000 were gainfully employed. Including those in the country without a work visa, that number of economically active immigrants likely exceed 1 million. Those foreign workers have been pumping billions of dollars worth of production and consumer spending into the Korean economy, at a time the country is seeing its own native population shrink. Korea recorded the most number of deaths and the fewest number of births last year. And among 224 countries of the world, its fertility rate of 1.25 in 2016 came in in the bottom five. It's against this gloomy backdrop that more are calling for a review of Korea's immigration policy, as well as the attitude toward incorporating foreigners into its core society. Another report showed that in order for the country to maintain a potential growth rate of 2.5 percent, it will need 1.27 million economically active expats by 2020, and 1.75 million 10 years after that. The government is mulling over an overhaul of its immigration policy that would make it easier for foreigners to permanently settle in Korea. But they do so carefully, amid concerns foreigners could encroach on quality jobs already in short supply for Koreans, as well as increase the added burden of economically inactive persons and the potential social clash that could happen from a resistant public. Eunice Kim, Business Daily. A new app is being released that will let consumers to check whether a product is subject to a recall as well as review its safety certifications before they buy it. The Fair Trade Commission says the app brings together product information from seven different state-run institutions, including the Korean Agency for Technology and Standards, the Ministry of Food and Drug Safety, and Korea Customs Service. Users can get product information just by scanning the barcode of each good, and the app will also help them apply for consumer compensation if necessary. This comes as consumers have raised issue with the difficulties in having faulty products or exchanged or returned at smaller retail stores compared to mega supermarkets and department stores. The app goes into service on Tuesday. Running errands during a busy week can sometimes seem almost impossible, especially here in Korea where many people work long hours into the night. And this might just explain why we have been seeing so many of those self-service systems pop up these days. And our Lee Young tells us what some of them are. At this self-service dry cleaner, customers can simply drop off their clothes and pick them up after about two days. It's hard to get dry cleaning done because I get home late and go to work early. That's why I use it. People can even pick up or return their goods that they ordered online from what's called a smile box installed at over 1,000 GS25 convenience stores around the country at their time of convenience. It was inconvenient to get parcels since I'm not usually home, but now I can just pick them up here after work. Even one of the major commercial banks, Shinhan, has rolled out a self-service digital kiosk, allowing customers to process almost 90 percent of banking tasks, which were once only possible through tellers. As the options for unmanned services increase, one of the concerns has been the potential job loss, especially as companies gear up for the fourth industrial revolution. But a recent report by Korea Development Institute may provide some relief, as it projects Korea's labor market is least likely to be affected among other OECD member countries. The state-run think tank says while an average 9 percent of jobs are at high risk of automation among the club of mostly rich countries, that number for Korea is at 6 percent. Lee ju Business Daily. And that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. Until then, goodbye.